Hi folks. It's been a while since I shared some tips and tricks on how to do interactive learning, how to actually promote that interactive learning with your students in a lecture style setting. I like to create a brainstorm. Now this is so old school, I know it's crazy, but the pedagogy underpinning this is actually pretty strong. So it doesn't matter what the topic is, you're going to put the topic up in the middle. And in this case, my topic that I'm asking you is what's important for interactive learning. So you pop that up front and center. Now, invite your audience to your class to actually throw some suggestions out. And I say to them things like, come on, guys, help me out here. What needs to go up on the board? Right. So they come up with communication, clarity, creativity. Nice one. Critical thinking. OK, yeah, that's important. Collaboration. Choices. Fun. Fun's important, people. And multimodal learning. That could be important. Now. Here's the trick that if you're going to do a brainstorm, you always ask them to figure out which one is the most important thing that needs to happen, that needs to be there. And the reason for doing this is because you're actually then getting them to do some critical appraisal where they've got to weigh up these different things that have turned up on the brainstorm, figure out why do I think that one is more important or that one is less important? Oh, but hang on, what about this and what about that? And simply by getting them to do that process, you are getting them to embed the learning more, right? Like they are literally creating thicker neuro pathways in their brains going, this stuff matters. So it doesn't matter what the topic is, and it actually doesn't matter what the answer is. The fact is that you're getting them to do that process. That's the bit that counts, right? It's a really helpful trip to know, and I definitely recommend using this strategy. And then I say to them at the end of them, you know, like it create a whole lot of conversation. You're like, wow, why is communication more important than critical thinking? How am I going to get my students to do critical thinking? One, I've just got them to do some appraisal where they've had to compare and contrast different things that were on that brainstorm. But next, I'm going to provide them with an example. OK, what would this look like in the context? And I'll tell a little story. I provide that example to hang it on. Then I ask them some critical questions around the application. So why do you think that did not work? What do you think ought to happen? Then once we've had the conversation around that, then I'm going to switch up some of the variables and I'm going to say to them things like, okay, so now we've established that in this context, blah, blah, blah. But what if it was a class full of law students? What else? Oh, and then it's a really good idea to ask them about what they're curious about now. You know, like we've had this robust discussion. What are you curious about now? And sit in silence comfortably for at least 30 seconds while you let them actually think about what it is that they are curious about. And then that can create a whole other conversation to kick you off into the next 10 minutes. Oh, just on that. When we have got learners' attention, we don't have it for that long. Um, what matters is that their attention span is going to go down. It's going to totally deplete. Like, So you'll start here at minute one. People are interested. They're engaged. They're like, okay, what are you selling? And then towards the next few minutes that's going to go down, it's going to peter out. Around the five-minute mark, you're losing attention. By the time you get 10 minutes, the absorption of information is flatlining. So it doesn't matter how good you are at spinning the yarn and the information going forward. Fact is, people are no longer listening. They're already thinking about what they're going to have for dinner or what's going on on Facebook. Every 10 minutes, switch it up. Plan it into your lecture. That every 10 minutes, you're going to be totally switching it up. You're going to be ideally getting them to move if you can't get them to move, then get them to be doing a different task. If they were taking notes, now they should be talking. You might get them to be doing some drawing, right? Drawing is a great way of stimulating their brains and getting people to embed information. So this comes under things like demonstrating information. You can get them to write notes. You could get students to present information back 
ideally to the whole group or to subgroups, you could get them to uh, summarize and you say to them, look, you're going to have 10 minutes now to think about what I've just said to you in the last 10 minutes. And during the next 10 minutes, you're going to work with the person beside you to create a 30 second presentation of key messages. You might also try the think, pair, share method. And now this is one where you simply ask the students first to think on their own what the answer to a question might be, and then ask them to share it with the person beside them, and then ask the entire group, okay, what did you guys come up with? What things came up? Now, the pedagogy behind this is that people feel much more comfortable in their own brains thinking about what it is that I think about stuff, and then they create a bigger bubble of comfort with, okay, I feel like it's okay for me to, especially if you've asked them to write it down, right? So thinking about what do you think on this subject, write down what you think on this subject, then share with your peer, what do you think about the subject, and then share with the wider room, right? So you're broadening their sense of comfort and their comfort around sharing their ideas with what they think. If you just skip to the share part, then this is um, not as great because you haven't warmed people up to, to sharing their ideas out in the big wide world. So the think, pair, share works best when you do think, write it down, pair, share. And creative practice. Now, creative practice is an option that some of us are playing around the edges with. It's good fun where you basically you're inviting people to present back, demonstrate their understanding through creative practice. This might mean you're asking them to bring a bunch of photos that they've taken that represent or use metaphors or song or dance or um whatever. Sew up a couple of pairs of jeans to demonstrate how we got our genes from our mum and dad, that kind of thing. So creative practice is really kind of off the wall stuff, but it can also include things like the use of post-it notes. I definitely recommend using post-it notes when and wherever possible. You know, they're easy to share out amongst the a class, even a large class, and you can get people to share their post-it notes part along, add to um, the message. So if they have a question, they might not feel comfortable with sharing that to the entire room, but they might feel more comfortable about writing it on a post-it note and then it's anonymously coming forward to the front of the room for you to answer. Now here, I'm only giving you options that do not involve a whole bunch of fancy technology, lingo and knowledge and capability, right? I'm talking old school here. So that's why I've said post-it notes and not something like Padlet, but that would be a great interactive online option for you to lean into. And finally, I just want to do a bit of a shout out for the visual components um, that we offer in learning. If you if you get people to think about the liver in this example, I'm I'm using the example of a liver, and then getting them to you know you, maybe I'm explaining to the class that there's two main lobes of the liver and they have different functions and they interact and all of this sort of stuff. If I get the students to draw the liver with me, then I'm embedding them, their thinking in a different kind of way, right? So they're actually they're using their visual processing. There's a lot going on in the brain that is a bit more than simply listening to me talk about it. If they actually draw it themselves, then they're, they're learning in a different kind of a way. And um, that's a good thing. Okay, so those are my tips and tricks for now. And um, let me know in the comments if this was worth your time and, uh, and if you wanna know more of this kind of stuff. Basically, everything that I've said today is evidence-based. I wish you all the best with your teaching practices. May they be interactive and awesome. Peace out.